us pray. God, truly, we want to be wherever you are. For in your presence, there is joy forevermore. And so, God, it's preaching time. And the people have come to hear a word from you. God, we ask that you might hide me behind that old rugged cross and send forth your anointing that makes preaching easy. God, send, for, send forth your anointing that pricks the heart of those that do not know you. That God, when the invitation is extended, they come crying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? For God, that is why we're here. It's to draw everyone to you. So our prayer this afternoon is that you have your way. For God, when you have your way, every little thing will be all right. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you the praise, for it all belongs to you. This we ask and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to begin by honoring the under-shepherd of this house, the Reverend Dr. Jonathan Augustine and the First Lady Sister Michelle Augustine. We thank Pastor Jay for allowing me this opportunity to stand behind this holy and consecrated desk just one more time. To my brother and sister in ministry, to the office of the members of St. Joseph, we greet you in the joy that is found in serving Jesus. The scripture lesson that I want to begin with is coming from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 13 in your hearing. As they say, long scripture, short message. So 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, and I'll be re reading verse 1 through 13. From the King James Version, you find these words. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee, and say, I am come to the sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me, him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his statue, because I, re I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and, and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. For the few moments that are mine this morning, I want you to consider with me the topic, what God has for you or a sub-blessing, get your blessing, what God has for you. No matter what you're going through in life, 
just know this one thing. What God has for you, it is for you. You may not have everything that you want, desire, or need right now, but just know and believe what God has for you, it is for you. It doesn't matter if you are young, old, black, white, rich, poor, educated or not, just know and believe what God has for you, it is for you. It doesn't matter if you're single, married, divorced, widowed, what God has for you, it is for you. And whatever God has for you, you don't have to lie to get it. You don't have to steal to get it. You don't have to cheat anybody to get it. You don't have to deceive anybody to get it. You don't have to argue or fight anyone to get it because what God has for you, it is for you. Instead of you battling someone to get what God has for you, you need to pray and let the Lord fight your battles and let him bring it to pass. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What God has for you may not come to you when you want it, when you want it to come. It may not come today. It may not come tomorrow. It may not come next week. It may not come next month, next year. But just know and believe what God has for you, it is for you, and it will come in God's own time. But in order to receive what God has for you, you have to be in a position to receive what God has for you. And to put yourself in that position to receive what God has for you, Psalms 37 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do good, and so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Yes, what God has for you, it is for you. One of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 84 and 11, declares, the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, no good thing, no good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Saul was the king of Israel. He was not a man of God and was not the choice of God to lead the people. The people of Israel were paying a dear price because of Saul. God determined that Saul, the people's choice, must be replaced. Sort of like when a sports team isn't going well and the owner determines that the manager or coach needs to be replaced. God's word to Saul through Samuel the prophet was final. The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. Keep in mind that Saul was never God's choice in the first place. It was Israel who demanded a king so that he could be like the nations around them. Saul was man's choice, not God's choice. In these passages of scriptures, 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13, we see the little boy David receiving what God had for him. This is the anointing to be the next king of Israel after King Saul. At this time, in these passages of scriptures, if you would read 1 Samuel 15, King Saul had been rejected by God to continue as king of Israel because of his willful disobedience. So God sent the prophet Samuel to Bethel to make a sacrifice to the Lord and to select to an, and anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be the next king of Israel. The reason why David received the anointing to be the next king of Israel was because his heart was right with God. And that is a good lesson to learn right there. And that lesson is that if you want to receive what God has for you, you've got to make sure your heart is right with God. To have your heart right with God, the Lord has to be the center and the head of your life. You, you have to be the one who trusts and obeys the Lord. You have to be the one who will worship and serve the Lord with all of your heart and with all sincerity. But David almost missed out on the anointing to be the next king of Israel because of what his daddy Jesse had done. You see, when Jesse received the word from the prophet Samuel that he was coming to Bethlehem to anoint one of his sons to be the next king of Israel, he took all of his sons to meet Samuel with hopes that one of them would be chosen and anointed to be the next king of Israel, his, his sons. Jesse took all of his sons except one to meet Samuel. The one son that Jesse left behind was David. 
Now when Samuel arrived in Bethlehem to meet Jesse and his sons, Jesse had all of his favorite seven sons to pass by Samuel, thinking that one of them would be anointed the next king of Israel. He had the first son, Elip, to pass by Samuel, and Samuel almost anointed Elip, the first son he saw because he looked handsome, he looked tall, he looked muscular, he had broad shoulders, he had a clean haircut, he was dressed in a sharp suit, he looked physically fit. Elip looked like he had the potential to be a good king. But the Lord intervened and told Samuel no, because God told him, not, look not unto his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh at the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God checks out our heart. Then Jesse had the second son, Abinadad, to pass by Samuel to be anointed the next king of Israel. But the Lord told Samuel, no. Then Jesse had his third son, Shammah, to pass by Samuel to be anointed the next king of Israel. But the Lord said, no. Jesse had all of his seven sons to pass by Samuel to be anointed the next king of Israel. And each time they passed by Samuel, the Lord said, no. All of Jesse's sons looked handsome, clean cut, all of Jesse's sons were just dressed sharp, and all of Jesse's sons looked physically fit. All of them looked like they had the potential to be the next king of Israel. But as they passed by Samuel to be anointed, the Lord told Samuel, no. Why? Because their heart was not right with God. They were men who did not have the Lord as the center or the head of their life. They were men who did not worship or serve the Lord with their heart, even though they were here with Samuel to make a sacrifice to the Lord, but their heart was still not right with God. Or we can say like this, even though Jesse's sons were at church, their heart was not right with God. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at our heart. You see, you can have everything going for you. You might be someone who has great talents. You might be someone who has a good personality. You might be ever so fine and ever so pretty. You might be someone who is all of that, a pack of chips and a nap. You might be someone who is popular with the crowd, but if your heart is not right with God, everyone may say yes, but God will say no. That is why the psalmist in Psalm 139 says, search me, O God and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Or the gospel according to Donnie McClurkin says, search me, O Lord, shine a light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out and strengthen me because I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. While Samuel wanted to say yes to the sons of Jesse, God says no, because their heart was not right with God. But if you want your heart with God, you need to give your heart to Jesus Christ because he is able to make your heart right with God. So Samuel asked Jesse, Does, do you have any other sons? And Jesse said, yes, I have another son who is the youngest out of all my other sons, and he is a shepherd boy. In other words, what Jesse was telling Samuel by that, by that age, David is the youngest son in the family. But in his eyesight, in Jesse's point of view, he was the least and smallest in the family. In other words, what Jesse was telling Samuel that David was not worth looking at. He was not worth the time to be dealing with. Plus him being a shepherd boy tending the sheep, he is gonna smell bad. He is going to be smelling like sheep. He is not as handsome or as physically fit like his brothers. The only thing he is good at playing is playing the harp and tending sheep. Jesse did not want David around, nor did he bring David along with his brothers to meet Samuel because he wanted David to be out of sight and out of mind. And that is cold when your own daddy don't think that much about you. 
It's cold when your friends want you out of sight and out of mind. It's cold when people see you standing there and act just like they don't see you. But know and believe this one thing, no matter how bad people talk about you, no no matter how people lie on you, no matter how people ignore you or overlook you, no matter how bad people ridicule you, just know and believe this one thing, what God has for you, it is for you. And notice what Samuel tells Jesse when he tells him that he has one son left that he has not seen. Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. There is a lesson that we can learn right here. And that lesson is what God has for you. You don't always have to look for it. You don't have to search high and low for it. It will come to you. And when you think about it, David wasn't even looking to be anointed to be the next king of Israel. He was minding his own business, watching the sheep. And usually that is when you get what God has for you. That is, you will find yourself blessed when you take care of your own business, doing the thing that God has called you to do and not worrying about what somebody else is doing. Notice that Samuel says, we will not sit down until David shows up. You see, there are some things that are waiting for your arrival. You see the thing that God has for you, it is waiting for your arrival. That job that God has for you, it's waiting for your arrival. That house that God has for you, it's waiting for your arrival. That husband or wife that God has for you, it's waiting for your arrival. What God has planned for you, What God has for you, it cannot take place until God brings you there. And what God has planned for you, what God has for you, nobody can take from you. Nobody can steal it. Nobody can cheat you out of it. You may not be where God wants you to be right now. Just know God will hold and maintain what he has for you. In other words, before God gives you what he has for you, he will prepare you for it. He will train you for it. You see, while David was out in the field tending his sheep, God was secretly preparing him to be the next king of Israel. And likewise, God is preparing you to receive what he has for you. According to the whinings, those he predestinates, he also called. And those whom he called, he justified. And then he justified, he glorified. So what can we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Or what God has for you, it is for you. And the scripture says that they sent for David and they brought him before Samuel. And the scripture says that David was ruddy, meaning that he had fair skin with bright eyes and good looking. And when David appeared before Samuel, the Lord says, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took out the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. It isn't for another 10 to 15 years before David actually takes the throne after being chosen by God. For part of that time, he is serving in Saul's administration. But for most of the next 10 to 15 years, you know where we find David? David went back home to his father's sheep. He went back to work. That is where he should remain until God called him to his actual service many years later. Check out these next few chapters. David was chosen because he was faithful to the task he was presently involved in. When God God has has given us what he has for you, he will anoint you and give you the Holy Spirit so you will be able to handle what he has for you. He will give you the understanding to handle what he has for you. He will give you the wisdom to handle what he has for you. He will give you the power to handle what he has for you. What God has for you, it is for you. But are you ready for what God has for you? You got to accept God's timetable and don't insist on your own. That is hard to do sometimes especially when we are brimming with enthusiasm for something, but it's God's way. He has a timetable. 
It is seen here in the life of David. But the principle is stated in 1 Peter 5 and 6, humble yourselves. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Due time is his time, not your time or my time. God is in control. He is working out his plan. If you want to be used by him, you must get in step with him. Remember what happened when Moses set out to deliver Israel on his own timetable? Yeah, it blew up in his face, didn't it? And it wasn't until 40 years later that God's time was right. I'm not suggesting here that you sit back and do nothing. I, I'm suggesting the very opposite. Keep pushing and striving to do those things that are pleasing unto God and his kingdom. Don't stop praying. Keep praying until your change comes. Don't stop believing. Believe that he is no shorter than his word. Don't stop trusting. Trust him the more. Don't start hoping for my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. When it doesn't work out like you expected though, don't try to force the issue by resorting to the methods and timing of the flesh. Keep pushing, keep pursuing, keep persevering. If God wanted David to be king immediately, he was certainly capable of making it happen. Saul would have been out there and David in there so fast, it would have made his head spin. If God wants you to do something special for him, he certainly has the power to do it. You should never resort to forcing a situation by using methods of flesh. Wait on God's timing. Wait on God's call. Abraham waited and he became the father of many nations. Noah waited on the Lord to give him dry land and an opportunity to start anew. Job waited on his call and persevered in his faith and trusted in the Lord's timing. Daniel waited on the Lord and God was glorified in the display of his power as he delivered his trusting servant from the lion's den. It may not come when you want it, but, but, it, but come wait on God. It will always be right on time. When it comes, it will be all that God has intended it to be. In conclusion, as you come to understand what God has for you, be reminded, no good thing will he withhold from you. God's promises are yes and amen, and they will never fail. God searches over his word to perform it. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered into the heart the things that God has prepared for you. God has designed you with a purpose. God has a plan for your life. God will strengthen and help you. God will guide your every footstep. His grace and his mercy is sufficient enough to keep you and hold you. His arm is not too short that it cannot save, nor his ear that too dull that he cannot hear your faintest cry. The gospel, as recorded by the Miami Mass Choir, penned this song. I wish I could sing, but I can't. What God has for me, it is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. I know without a doubt that he will surely bring me out. What God has for me, it is for me. It is for me, it is for you. What God has for you, it is for you. If you learn or reminded of nothing else, remind that God, whatever God has for you, it is for you and go get your blessing. Don't stop pushing. Don't stop praying. Don't stop trying. Don't stop believing. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop praying. Don't stop witnessing. Don't stop telling everybody about how good Jesus is while you're waiting on that which God has for you. Because when it comes, and it's sure to come, it'll blow your mind. It'll change your life. It'll fix your circumstances. It'll give you direction. It'll give you clarity. If you just believe what God has for you, it is for you. Amen.